Hey, it's Ron Caroni here, your Saskatchewan mortgage professional. And are you considering a home that needs a little bit of renovation for your next purchase? Well, this is the episode that you must watch because we are talking about the Purchase Plus Improvement Program. Mortgage broker extraordinaire and my friend, Chris Kalinske, joins us on the show. Hope you enjoy. You're listening to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast where we chat with real estate experts from across the province to learn what's happening in the real estate market. Here's your host, Ron Caroni. Welcome to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, Chris. It's really good to have you back on. Thanks for having me again. It's uh, it's very exciting because you are one of the early guests and we've kind of graduated uh, technology editing. So uh, glad to have you on the, the new and improved program. Excited. I like the topic we're talking about today too. So I'm, yeah. uh, it's something I'm really passionate about and I think you're passionate about it too. So I think it'll be a good show. It's a fantastic mortgage product and we're talking about purchase plus improvement. So rather than me just uh, yelling at myself uh, in a room alone, I thought I'd uh, bring you on and uh, talk about it. So first off, Chris, tell us what is a purchase plus mortgage? Yeah, for sure. So a purchase plus improvement mortgage is a product that is meant to help people that are wanting to buy a house, but wanting to do rentals at the same time, like at the, while they're in the buying process, they take possession house and then they want to renovate maybe the kitchen, the bathroom, paint, flooring, something like that. They can actually take out additional money on top of their mortgage and use that money to complete those rentals. And so what is the big benefit of this? And uh, you know, why financially does this make sense? Um, The reason why it makes sense is because when you're shopping for a house, um, you're going to have all these boxes. Let's just say you have have 10 boxes that you want to check. The house has got to have four bedrooms. It's got to be located to the school that's close to your kids. Um, It's got to have an upgraded bathroom and an upgraded uh, kitchen. Uh, You have all these boxes, right? Um, And while you're looking for this house, it's extremely rare where you're going to find a house that checks off 10 out of 10 boxes. It's, it almost never happens. If, if it does, great. That's a perfect house, jump on it. But it almost never happens. That's the reality. Um, and so why not, if you can find a house that maybe checks off six, seven boxes, and let's just say you go into the house, it, it, it again, checks off a lot of those boxes, but it's missing, the kitchen is outdated right? But everything else fits. It's a really good house, but the kitchen isn't updated. It's an outdated kitchen, old, like that old, like oak kind of style. Um, A lot of people might see that as like a make or break. They're like, no, we don't want an old kitchen. But that's what this, that's what's perfect about this program is that you can get into this, you can still buy this house, take out that additional money, renovate that kitchen in this example. And now that house checks off another box, right? And as opposed to just putting it on a line of credit or a credit card, it's beneficial to be able to throw that money back onto the mortgage. Now, there are a few requirements built into that. And we'll get to that just a little mm-hmm. bit later. Uh, but let's quickly touch on what improvements can be made. And just speaking on a, on a general sense, Chris. For sure. So really, the improvements that you're going to be allowed to do or the lender is going to let you do is really anything that's going to increase the value of the house. So typically, they're not going to want you to buy brand new appliances for the, for the house, if it's got older appliances, or it's not going to let you install a hot tub or, or anything like that. Cause that stuff doesn't really add value to the house. And to be honest with you, all that stuff can actually be taken out and just sold after you take possession. Right. Um, so essentially they want it to be that if, and when you sell this place has the value increased. Um, so things like fresh paint jobs, kitchen renovations, shingles. Um, Maybe you need a new furnace in the place. Maybe the furnace is outdated, water heater, stuff like that, where again, it's going to increase the value of the the house. So someone's watching this, Chris, and they're like, wow, this sounds like an amazing program, which it is. And they're wondering how they're going to take advantage of this. And as they go through the mortgage process, what are the steps that they're taking? And take us through that timeline of the purchase plus improvement. For sure. So again, you're going to, once you're pre-approved, the first step that you always want to do when you're buying a house is get pre-approved. That's the very first step that you want to do because you don't want to be wasting anybody's time, including your own. So first up, get pre-approved. Once you're pre-approved, now you can kind of start that, that house shopping process. That's kind of the next step. Uh, Cause again, you're not going to know what is out there until you get out there and start looking. Right. Um, once you find a place that checks off a lot of those boxes, but maybe it's missing a few things, um, 
to reach out to your mortgage broker, mortgage professional, and maybe chat a bit about this program um, to see if the rentals that you're wanting to complete fits in that program. Again, most of these, as long as it's increasing the, the value of the place, it should be fine. Um, and uh, as, and you know, then there's going to be some as you mentioned earlier, there's going to be some stipulations on there as well on how to qualify maximums, that kind of stuff. Um, but reach out to your mortgage broker, see if it works. And then if it does, you can go ahead and make an offer on this place. Now, once you have an accepted offer in that offer, there's going to be a, a clause in there called a condition of financing, which gives you X amount of days to secure mortgage financing. Um, this is the period where you're going to send it in for mortgage approval to the lender. Um, during in that package or during that process, the lender's going to also want to review the rentals that you're going to want to do and how they do that and how they determine the value to those rentals is they're going to want to have a quote sitting in front of them from a licensed contractor that shows how much value that this is going to add to the place. So let's use my example again about the kitchen rental. Um, kitchen rentals can go in around 20, 30, 40 K in, uh, in extra costs to renovate a kitchen, depending on the style and the size. Um, so let's just say, let's use easy numbers, $40,000 is that kitchen reno. Uh, you're going to go to a contractor and you're going to have that contractor go through the house, give you a quote. And let's say that quote comes in at 40K. They're going to give you that quote and you're going to send that quote into your mortgage professional so they can send that into the lender. And now the lender is going to have a good idea on how much it's going to cost um, to, or how much they can give you for that, that purchase process improvement. And once that uh, that contractor's quote amount has been kind of factored in, that becomes our new mortgage amount, right? We, we right. blend in what that after repair or the, the repair into the mortgage value, and that becomes that new amount. Right. So what's going to happen is uh, in Canada, the government of Canada doesn't allow lenders to lend more than 95% of the value of a house when you're buying a place. That means you need 5% down. That's the difference between 95 and 100. Um, now, what's going to happen is the value, how they determine the value is typically they look at the purchase price. That's the value because a house is worth what someone's willing to pay for it, right? Uh, so they look at the value. But if you're going to do an additional $40,000 in renovations, they're going to tack on that 40K in, uh, in renovations. And now the 5% down payment is going to be based on purchase price plus the uh, improvement value or the, in our case, the 40K in kitchen rentals and the 5% down payment will be based on that. And the lenders are not going to automatically give us this money at the time of funding. There's a little bit of a process that we have to go through once you take possession of the property and once those renovations start. Right. So the that's, in my opinion, that's really the only downside with this program is that you have to have some sort of cash flow when you take possession of this place. Typically, people, when you're buying a house, and the reason why the program is so good is that most people don't have just 40K sitting around to pay for a rental or line of credits can be expensive. Credit cards are definitely expensive when you're when you're doing renovations. But most people don't just have that cash sitting around, uh, especially for a long term uh, rental, right? Um, this program here, um, they'll advance that money only after the rentals are completed. So you take possession of your place, um, they'll advance the money for the mortgage portion that goes to the seller, right? Um, and then you have to front the cost of the um, renovation until it's completed. So in this case, again, the 40k rentals, the, the, the positive side is that you only have to float it from until it's done, right? So you're not like, you don't have to pay for this entire reno and then that money's gone right now. Um, but you do have to finance that reno, whether it's with the line of credit, credit card. It's only temporary. So the interest on those things are going to be minimal um, or cash that you guys have saved. Uh, a lot of contractors also will, you can take 90 days to pay the contractor. So maybe they'll take a deposit up front. And then once it's completed, you have 90 days. Once the rentals are completed, the money actually gets released pretty quickly, like within a few days. So a lot of contractors are okay with receiving the rest of the money later. Right. And in that case, there is a, a few extra costs in there, like an appraisal fee that'll happen yeah. because an appraiser has to go in and verify that the work has actually been done. You haven't just taken this money and put it in your pocket. Right. So it's not, just keep in mind though, it's not a full appraisal that we're going to need on this place. It's just like a, an appraiser does it, they go through, it's called a confirmation of improvements. And it's usually like a one page or a couple pages of, they take pictures of things that are completed and it says, yes, based on the quotes, they have completed these renovations. 
and uh, you guys can release this money. Which is also why it's really important during this process that you're doing the things that you said you were going to do with that money, right? If you exactly. say you're going to replace those oak cabinets, but then you decide, I want that jacuzzi tub in the bathroom. <laughs> and that's not something the lender has uh, said that you are going to be able to use this money for. You're not going to get the money. I think it's also important to note, though, that it's not even just if you say you're going to do the kitchen reno and then you go and do a, a hot tub or something like that, where it's something that's typically not approved for the improvement portion. But if you say you're doing the kitchen reno and you do the bathrooms and the railings and you know, other stuff and not the kitchen reno, you're also going to run into issues there, even if this stuff would have been approved before, because the approval is based on this, yeah, right? So when the, when the inspector, yeah. exactly. So when the inspector is coming through, they're going to have a quote and they're going to say, okay, this is this, 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 none of this is done. What's, what's going on. So now it can be really complicated. The mortgage broker has to get involved with the lender. Uh, we typically will go for bad. I've, we've had to do it before uh, where we had to, and luckily there were just small things. Like uh, it was, there, I gave the example of railings, but they did most of the stuff on the quotes. And then they did, they didn't do that. I think it was, didn't do paint and they just did the railings instead. Um, and the lender had a huge issue with it. We eventually got th got it through, but it was a whole process and stressed the client out. And it's just not something that I would recommend. So like you said, if you're planning on doing X rentals, make sure you're doing those X rentals. A couple of quick notes, Chris. The maximum value of this and how long you have to complete the renovations once possession has been taken. For sure. So typically the maximum you're going to allow to be able to take out is $40,000, especially when we're looking in larger centers like Saskatoon, um, 40,000 is going to be the maximum that you can do. There is some exceptions where you can go higher, but those typically now are going to be more of a, a construction mortgage with draws and different stages and there. They can be very expensive and they can be really complicated and stressful. Uh, so those don't really happen a lot, but 40,000 is going to be pretty much that, that limit. It's a, uh, Depending on which insurer gets approved, um, there's some uh, there's some other qualifications in terms of maximum. Uh, one insurer does 10% of the uh, as improved value and the uh, which it will be the maximum or 40k, um, or the the other insurer will do 20% of the. Um, mortgage amount or 40K, whichever is lower. And what you're talking about there is the mortgage default insurer. First, yes. the, the file will go to the lender and then the lender, if it's a high ratio file or if it's being mortgage default insured, will go to the insurer to be verified and, and that's what you're meaning in that sense. And exactly. And that's the reason why the, the reason why it's so important to also do the rentals that you're saying you're doing is because everything has to go through the insurer if you have less than 20% down, right? So if you don't complete those rentals, the insurer has to re-improve. And whenever you have to go back to the insurer, it's, it's not a good thing. You don't want to do that. Um, the amount of time that you have once you've taken possession of the property to complete these. And this can be tough now when a lot of contractors are very busy. There's lots of renovations happening, a lot of home building going on because the demand is there. How long does someone have to, to get these renovations done? Every lender is a little different. Um, so it really depends on where your mortgage professional is taking that, that um, purchase plus improvements mortgage to. Uh, but typically it's going to be between 90 and 120 days. So uh, three to, to four months that you'll have to, to complete those rentals, which is usually more than enough time, depending on what the renovations are. But because of COVID, we're seeing a lot of things backed up. I have one right now where I'm dealing with it right now, where we did the mortgage in beginning of May, and we had to get a couple extensions with the lender. Luckily, this lender allowed extensions on this uh, Purchase Plus, because they, they also understand that everything's backed up. They're doing a huge rental. Like it's, it's, um, they're renovating like the whole house pretty much. And, uh, so the contractors, it's not that the contractors slow. It's just a lot of this products delayed or, or taking a long time to, uh, to come in. Understood. Now, Chris, you've been in the game for quite a while here. You were doing mortgages pre pandemic. What would you say is, is, is there a higher demand for this type of product? And I guess I'll tie this in with another question, uh, just quickly. Um, when doing the purchase plus improvement mortgage, you can do that on purchases and refinances, correct? Uh, it's definitely more common on purchases, refinances. There's very few lenders that do it. And it's, it's not the same product. It's, it's a different product that they would do. And they'd still, 
refinances are a tricky beast when it comes to this kind of stuff. Because if you have enough equity in your house, you wouldn't do a refinance plus improvements at all. You just pull out the equity and use that for the, for the, uh, uh, renovation much more common than on the purchase side. Yeah. So tying that in, uh, because of, uh, COVID and a lot of people spending more time or planning to spend more time in their homes is, has this become a more popular product for people? Yeah, I would say, I would say so the purchase plus improvements is by far the most popular product that I even offer, or we as mortgage brokers offer, I do quite a few of these every year. Again, most of them are going to be on purchases. Actually, all of them are on purchases in my case. Um, it's like I said, it's very rare that it happens on a refi, but it, it has, because people are wanting to get out of their house and, and upgrade to a new place, we're definitely seeing a lot of that. And the inventory is really low as well. So when you're out there shopping, there isn't a lot available. So people are starting to realize, oh, if I'm going to get into something that I really want to be in, I'm going to have to do some rentals. Totally. Uh, Chris, I think that just about wraps it up for our Purchase Plus questions. Have I missed anything? Is there anything you want to quickly add on this? I don't think so. I just, I just think it's extremely important that uh, you reach out to whoever you're dealing with for your mortgage, just to chat about this program a little bit to make sure that it fits what you're looking at doing. Um, because again, you're not going to, it's very rare. You're going to find a place where it's going to check off all your boxes. So why not buy a place that maybe is a little cheaper um, and take out additional money to, to make it your dream home, essentially. Perfect. Uh, Chris, we've been asking everyone who comes on the podcast, you got a, a different question the last time you're on, but uh, the new, new question is if you could go back and give advice to a younger version of yourself, doesn't matter if whether it was when you were starting mortgages or even earlier, what advice would that be to you? I love this question because hindsight's always 2020. Uh, my wife and I bought a house, uh, our first house almost 10 years ago now. And uh, we bought a townhouse condo and we just recently converted that into a rental. Uh, what I wish we would have done, and if I could go back and, and, and change things or give myself some advice, I would have told ourselves just to go back and, and buy a house with a, a basement suite in it, with a, like a two unit place. Um, because for the first six years we were there, we didn't really, we didn't have kids. And so um, we could have rented out the basement. We didn't use the basement anyways, except for just storage. So we could have rented out the basement, help cash flow that mortgage payment a little more. And then now that it's converted to a rental, uh, we would be able to cash flow that place even more. So uh, it's something that I really wish we would have done. And I encourage, you know, if you are looking for your first home and it, it's probably best if you don't have kids right now um, because it's tough to have kids running around on the upstairs floor and people living underneath you. But um, if, you know, if you're looking at buying your first home, I think you should seriously be considering buying someplace with a basement suite in it. An amazing topic for a, a future episode here, the, <laughs> yes. the benefits of having the basement suite. Absolutely. Uh, quickly, Chris, where can people find you on social media? For sure. Pretty much anywhere at, at, Chris Kalinsky. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, everywhere. Just at my first and last name. And on Facebook, it's at Chris Kalinsky Mortgages because Chris Kalinsky wasn't available, but everywhere else is just my name. Fantastic. Chris, thanks so much for coming on, talking about the, the Purchase Plus improvement. Uh, really appreciate your, your expertise and your time. Thanks for having me, Ron. Thanks again to Chris for joining us on the program today. If you haven't done so yet, Make sure to check out the episode on Spotify as well. You can find us at the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. Please show your support for the show by hitting the like and subscribe button. My name is Ron Caroni, your Saskatchewan mortgage professional. Until next time, have yourself a great week. This has been the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. If you like this episode, find more information and episodes on our Facebook and YouTube pages. If you'd like to be a guest or have a conversation you'd like to learn more about, let us know by messaging the show on Facebook. Thanks for listening.